Hello everybody, we're on a video, it's like we're playing Amiga Slay, but for a different reason this time. It's not technically a memories video, I suppose, in a way it could be. It's just 10 games in no particular order on the Amiga that I know a lot more about now that I didn't know back in the day. And these changes can either maybe get further in games, maybe even finish the game. Basically game changes, but sometimes quite surprising how many things I didn't know because I've been playing games pretty much all my life. But yes, no particular order. But anyway, streaming all games, 10 things I didn't know back in the day that I do now video. Let's go. Okay, we start off with a classic. This is fantastic. But anyway, like I say, there's no particular order to this list. There's 10 things I didn't know back in the day. We start things off with Zedon 2 and Mega Blast. Okay, so the game is Zedon 2 Mega Blast, 1989 shoot -em up video game, developed by Big Bad Brothers and published by Imageworks, Atari ST and Amiga. It was later converted to Master System, Mega Drive, CD TV, Game Boy, Egg Hunt Other and Atari Jaguar platforms. It's a sequel to Zedon, which takes place in a millennium after the first game. And what a game it is! Now this game is superb, it took me years to finish it, but this game got played at death back in the day. But why did it take me so long to finish it? Well, because I've been playing it wrong after this time. It took me ages to realise what I was doing wrong. Okay, we arrive in a shop. I've got £1,000. What do you want to sell me? Nothing. But what I was doing back in the day, which was doing it all wrong, was I wasn't buying anything. I was trying to save money. So basically, if we're finishing energy, I wasn't doing that. I just assumed, right, okay, £1,000 we have. I'm not gonna buy anything. We're gonna save it for the next level. And just going for it. Start the next level with less energy. So here we go, next level, and I hardly have any energy. So yes, I was risking it for a biscuit. And so I thought. But this game does give you energy along the way, but when you desperately need it, it feels like a lifetime, but it should be some around here somewhere. Small heart replenishes a small amount of energy. A large heart replenishes the whole thing. I don't need it now. Look at that energy. Alright, there we go. Fantastic. So yeah, that saved me quite a bit of money there. Not a boss battle, but yes, energy is not great, but it has been worse. But when you don't need energy, you see it all the time. When you need it, it feels like a lifetime. Okay, back again. 4,800. What do I sell me? Gonna sell nothing. Okay, what do you want to buy? I'm going to buy the double bullets. I always do. So yes, because I didn't spend anything in the first shot, I didn't buy any energy, which of course makes it more difficult for you. 1,000 roll over to this one, so I'm assuming 3,800 while earning that one, we up to the grand total of 4,800. But that's what I thought. But yes, I was so, so wrong. It doesn't work like that. And there's also some advice you can buy in the first shop, which basically is saying you cannot take it with you, which of course I didn't know what that meant. But yes, it does exactly what it says in the tin. Use it or lose it. So what if you don't spend? So what I might well have done in the back of the day was go to the exit door with 1,800, risk it for a biscuit and have more for the next level. But no, you'll actually lose it. As soon as I leave this exit door, 1,800 will be taken away, leaving me absolutely nothing. So basically, I was doing it wrong for so many years. So you're going to lose it anyway. You might as well spend whatever you can spend to 500 additional health. And also, if you buy the same item twice or even three times, it makes it more valuable when you want to sell it later on in the future. So yeah, just keep filling it up. Buy it 200. Don't lose with that. You might as well spend it anyway. You can buy a Nash one. 600 pounds, why not? If it's 200 pounds, we'll have some advice. So there we go. That's the way to do it. Buy a double shot, have we done it? But even back in the day, I actually wrote it down in my book because I was desperate to finish this game. I tried everything, but yes, 1A, buy nothing, sell nothing. 2A, buy nothing, sell back shot. Uh, also, 4A, buy nothing, sell side shot. And by the time you get to 4B, I assume having loads and loads of money, you can buy so much. And I also put, sell the back shot, but you do lose it towards the end for the side shots. But yes, some weapons, you buy it and it'll cancel out other ones. But there we go, we've got nothing in the bank account, which is five, even if I did, we didn't buy anything, I've nothing as well. We exit the shop though. But yes, quite a crucial thing, but I have completed it many times now, including on live stream, but it helps knowing how the shop works. But there we go, it's a fantasy game, that is it on two. Next one on the list, A Boys Without Brains Production. Another fantastic game, which I have finished, but not back in the day. This is a disposable hero we have on the CD32, but yes, it was tough back in the day because, again, there was something crucial which I didn't know. 
Activated. Okay, so the game is Disposable Hero, a side scoring shooter, released in 1903, developed by Euphoria, and published by Grimmin Graphics. So the first time I played this, actually on the CD32, was a demo I bought from a boot fair. The CD32 version is actually a lot more easier than this version. But the reason why I didn't finish it back in the day, it was pretty much the same reason as said on 2. It's down to the shop once again, so very crucial. I cannot believe it realised back in the day. We found out last year. Okay, two games, two shots. However, only one features Colin. This one doesn't really feature Manny. This one's based around power drainage. And of course, in games like this, you start with very limited skill. And this shop has very limited upgrades. There's only one we can actually do, but we don't have the right engine. We can try it, but it won't allow us to do it. So yes, basically, it's based around research and waiting time. And having the right engine. So having the right engine to equip that without it, this is going to go on when it's be available. But yes, if they're not available, it will say either no data underneath it, or like this one, there'll be a time underneath it. So basically, you just can wait a little bit longer, and then do it that other way. But yes, assuming there was only six boxes, only six possible upgrades. So I thought. Okay, I'm going to shop. Should have more items now. Okay, we're here again, but now we have more skills. So now what we're going to do now is equip the new engine. Click on that and click on use. And if you have that, that allows you to upgrade this, use, and this, use. But yes, back in the day, I kept thinking, what well, this game is fantastic. But why is it only limited to six weapons? What we have now to upgrade is this one. But yeah, it just kept baffling my brain. I didn't understand it. So now when we exit, we have more weapons. Okay, we're here again, and as we see, we have another prototype, but yes, that did answer a few questions for me, because I thought, yes, back in the day, six weapons doesn't seem enough, so another one became available, so of course, I clicked on that, the skills, once again, are limited, so okay, six, six, twelve, okay, that makes sense, so there is more to this, so I just assume that that is all you get in this game. Okay, I've arrived at level 4, but yes, this was actually the furthest level I reached back in the day. I couldn't get past this lobster character. But yes, the trouble is, your spacecraft is very slow, and that was a big, big problem with a level that takes place underwater. But yes, last year, I finally figured out where I was going wrong after all this time. I couldn't believe it. Okay, so here we go. Now, I can't believe it took me to the year 2021 to realise this, but I knew about the info bar, but we had this arrow up and arrow down, and again, I knew they were there. Now, you click on the item, it gives you some information. And I just assumed that the up and down was a way of scrolling through the information. I just kept thinking, there's not a lot of information for each item. So I scrolled down. And then this happened. I just kept clicking it. All of a sudden, so many more weapons were coming available. I just couldn't believe they were sitting there the whole entire time, all this time, and I hadn't even realised. But this opens up so many possibilities. That makes you faster. Equip the new engine. That allows you to equip more weapons, including side bullets and missiles. I couldn't believe it. So yes, all this time, it was just sitting there. I just couldn't see it. Okay, and in the blink of an eye, we've got so much additional firepower, and also we're faster. I just couldn't believe, I didn't realise that. But what a game changer. In fact, it changed it so much, that two weeks later, I finished it for the very first time. And then a week later, I finished it on live stream. It's still a very challenging game, though, but it's still a, a thing I just cannot believe I missed. And this enemy here was the one I kept killing me back in the day, but I killed it pretty much immediately with all this. But you've got to keep me distance. But there we go, goodbye, Mr. Lobster. But what a game! What a memory! And what a thing to find out at such a late time of playing it! But there we go, fantastic game, Disposable Hero! There we go, next one on the list, fantastic game, Sleepwalker! The box version here, didn't have one back in the day. However, I've learned something today! When you press the spacebar on the title screen, there's actually an option screen, I didn't actually realise what existed! So there we go, I didn't actually realise this game had an option screen, I found out today. But yes, start options, animation, difficulty, why you want to go for hard, I don't know. But you can increase your attempts from 3 to 5. Also, the training level. Didn't realise. Okay, so the game is Sleepwalker, a platform game developed by CTA Development and published by Ocean Software for the Amiga, Amiga CD32, Commodore 64 and Atari ST in 1993. It was then ported to MS-DOS and the game was also re-released in 1904 using Ick the Cat license for the Super Nintendo. Which I've never seen before, but this is a game which I've had for most of my life actually. I didn't have a box version back in the day, or a manual, but I do now. But yeah, this game, you desperately do need a manual. But yes, something I didn't know back in the day, which is quite crucial, I found out in one of my live streams. It was Sweet Sounds Amiga that said, on the chat, M for map. And I was like, this game doesn't have a map, does it? 
So we'll try in a moment, but yes, you want to try and keep your sleepwalker safe. Do this by getting rid of as many hazards as possible. Don't fall in the water. Believe it or not, a sleepwalker can't swim. But yes, there's going to be times we're going to get separated. It's always going to happen in a game like this. So press M, and there we go. It will tell you where they are. It tells you where you are, Ralph the dog, and where Lee is, Lee the sleepwalker. But yeah, I had no idea this game had a map. But yes, if you're close together, it's no big problem. But on a level like this, it's very easy to be separated. So you've got to try and get him to the exit in the easiest way, safest way possible. Now, every time he walks into a wall, that drains his energy. Falling from a height drains his energy. And of course, falling into the water is an instant kill. He starts off with three lives. But yeah, it starts off very difficult right from the go. But there's also a training mode in the option screen, which I had no idea existed. I have tried it, but yeah, it just teaches you how to kick him, basically. You have to kick him to get him to higher heights or further distances, wherever the case may be. But yeah, it's a really, really well-made game, which of course is based around comic relief, which happens here in the UK once a year. But yeah, difficult. Okay, crucial point. Now, if you have played this game, we have got lost at some point here. It's easily done. It's very easy to be separated. But of course, if you do, use the map. This power cable is crucial. Provided just one bounce, he should have gone in the direction I wanted him to go, which is up. But yes, you both bounce at the same time. One's going to go up, and one's going to go down. But yes, I'd like to put multiple hazards close together. We've got to try and kick him up there, kick him down there, jump over here, and don't be burnt to a crisp. That's the plan anyway. We kick him up there. But also, there's an icon over here which replenishes his energy. We didn't know what it was at first until we read the manual. That's actually earmuffs, which puts him into deeper sleep. Basically, his energy. But yes, that is very difficult to do, that bit. Okay, same there. Walks over you. But yes, you can actually increase the lice from 3 to 5. But again, didn't know you could do that. That was rather close, I have to admit. But anyway, we're nearly there. But yes, that map, I had no idea this game had a map. So once again, thank you to Swedish House of Media. I never knew this game had a map. But we're not too far away. But also, your character is also equipped with a baseball bat. And yes, amongst all this chaos, if you can collect all the letters to spell the word comic, that would take you to a bonus stage, which I've never actually done before. But don't be run over by a car. But there we go. First level is complete. There we go. Brilliant game. There we go. Next on the list, fantastic game. One of my favourites on the Amiga. This is the Adams Family. Okay, so the game's Adams Family, a platform game based on an unknown film of the same name, developed and published by Ocean Software. Released for home computer consoles, including the SNES, home computer systems, including the Amiga, and handhelds like the Game Boy. And being one of my favourite platform games on the Amiga, how on earth would I bet this secret back in the day? I don't know. Starting things off by picking up the shoe, which allows you to run faster and jump further. With that, go through this door. Now you jump over here and pick up the feds, which allows you to fly, but it wears off very quickly. Go through the door and jump up here very quickly. And then jump and go through the floor. And you start the game off with five lives. You've gone from five to eight already. Change to go through this door, pick up another shoe, and you've got so many lives in your possession. I've completed this game so many times, it's been a long play. How on earth not know about this back in the day? I don't know. But yeah, this game is very generous. I just didn't realise how generous it was. Also, you can also get more, depends on how free you want to go. Go through here, and even hearts of plenty. You start the game off with two hearts, the maximum is five. More hearts here in a pack of cards. But there we go. Absolutely superb. 27 lives. And of course, the Dollar icons also work as digital hearts as lives as well. Every 25 you pick up, you get additional heart. 100 gives you additional life. But I think there's also a few more. One here, I believe. But yes, very generous. But yes, you start off with five. There are a few places I tend to go quite early on for digital lives. Or we'll just do it like this. But yeah, I just didn't realise I didn't know about it. But yeah, it's a fantastic game. But yeah, not going to be a lot of footage for this time. But I just can't believe I missed it. But there we go. Fantastic game. That is Adam's family. Another heart, another door. There you go, can you tell what it is yet? Fantastic! Never actually finished it before, only the remaster I have finished. But this is God's Fantasy Game by the Bitmap Brothers. Okay, so the game is God's, a platform game by the Bitmap Brothers, released for Amiga and Atari ST in 1991. The player's cast is Hercules in the quest to achieve immortality. It was ported to the Akon Archimedes, Sega Mega Drive Genesis, the PC-98, as well as the SNES. Now the bit I'm actually referring to is quite some way into the game, so I've got to try and get there first. But yeah, this is level 1, but what I'm referring to is actually in level 2. 
Okay, not bad. Four lives, I have. Going well. According to the game's own instruction, four guardians have invaded and usurped the Citadel of the Gods. The Gods offer any hero that can see and be taken to Citadel one favour. The hero who comes forth merely asks the Gods for their favour to be granted, on the among them as an equal. The Gods are only confronted by the hope of the hero failing. After the last boss is defeated, the boss proves true to their word, and the last image of the hero's body becoming beaten by the light of the Sent from Olympus. But anyway, this is the first of the four bosses. But yes, I have finished the remaster. But yeah, this one I haven't. But I have gone quite far. It's one of those games I either play good or I play badly. But a sequence of absolute plenty. I'm always learning new things. Pretty much every time I'm going to play it. But anyway, you do get lots of weapons though. Pretty much like Zedon 2, that sort of thing. There we go. First boss is complete. But anyway, on to the next level. That's where the focusing point is. Okay, now this section over here, of course, we can't go through there, but what you have to do in this section is basically every single switch in this area, once you've used it, you've got to return it back to the up position. Now, if you don't do that, then these will stay in place, and that won't allow you to get to the cross, which you've got to take to the chapel. Okay, going to do it the way we did it back in the day, the most difficult way, but anyway, it's a dragon. The second boss of this game, but what is difficult with it is the fact you can't shoot while crouching, and you're very, very confined space, and the character is quite slow. But he's got to try and avoid the flame as well as the tail. The tail makes it very difficult, but he can shoot the tail. Which removes the tail altogether. And that's not so bad after that. This is a case of just being in the right place at the right time and crouching and jumping when you need to. to keep clear of the flame. But yeah, you do have energy bars for both yourself and the enemy. Which is a good thing. But yeah, it is a lot more difficult this way. But once you get rid of the tail, if you've only got enough energy, you should be okay. But there we go. Fantastic. Four lives. But anyway, that's one way you do it. That's the way we used to do it back in the day. But what I've learned over the course of time is the other way. Okay, so the other way to do it, the easier way of doing it, is time consuming though, but every time you've activated one of these switches in this area, you have to put the switch back to the up position. So if you've used it to open a door or put a platform in place, put it back afterwards. That will allow you to get the cross from the chapel. But there's still quite a lot to see and do. So many different areas, so many different enemies in this place, and even with so much firepower, it's still difficult to kill them, especially these snakes. But yeah, it's tough. Now hopefully, when I jump over here, these should disappear, like so. Now that wouldn't have happened if you haven't put all the switches in the up position, and because you have, two of them are taken away, which allows you to pick up the cross. And you've got to take that to the chapel. Okay, so once you've got the cross, take it to the chapel. Now this is the chapel, so this should reward me with a great big massive gem. So pick that up, it's gigantic. So there we go, a magical gem stolen from the dragon. Now what it does is, that actually protects you from some of the dragon's attacks. So we've got to try and do the difficult thing now, get in there without taking too much damage. As you can see, my energy is absolutely horrendous. Okay, we're here. Yes, my energy's absolutely poo, but it's fine. I've got the magical gem. But even with energy as low as this, I should survive this. Just be quick about it. What we're going to try and do is basically put the magical gem on the floor and then get back. And what happens is, the dragon will not pass that gem. So you can actually shoot from a distance, and so is he. But we should be okay like this. Just avoid the tower attack. But if he's close to the ground, then that shouldn't be a problem either. So take out away the tower and watch out for the fire. But at a distance, you shouldn't have any issues. But yes, I didn't realise there was actually two ways of doing this. I had seen this diamond before. I've picked it up a few times before. But I didn't know what its purpose was. But yes, it actually protects you from the dragon. It makes it a lot more easier for you. So there we go. Didn't take any additional hits. Pick up the key. And open the door. And we're good to go. Fantastic. But yeah, it's a difficult boss. But it is certainly doable. Yes, the progression up to it is quite time consuming. But it definitely does save you a life or two. But there we go, they're going to the shop, like say on two, it's a fantastic game, that is gods. There we go, next one on the list, another classic, Rainbow Islands, the story of Bubble Bubble 2, Seattle Corporation 1987, all rights reserved. Okay, so the game, this is Rainbow Islands, another superb game, came out in 1987 by Seattle. Now this game, I've never actually finished on the Mega before, but I'm pretty sure you've probably guessed what I'm going to be trying to do here. Now I've only done it a few times, but of course, you all know the rules of the game. But there's a little bit more to it, and I have to admit, back in the day, we didn't do it because we didn't know you could do it. But what you're going to try and do is patiently pick up all these diamonds in the usual way, but with a little bit more additional twist. You'll try and pick them up in the correct order. 
which is not simple considering I've only done it a few times, but I have tried it a few times since then. And for me, it does sort of ruin the game a little bit for me, because it's too focused on other things. But what we want now is a yellow diamond. As long as you get them from left to right in that order, then you are rewarded even more than you normally are before. Did you do get additional life, but you also get additional power, which will last you for the entire level, providing you don't lose any additional continues. But yeah, it does slow the game down, I think, which is not good for a game that relies on a time limit, which starts filling up with water. Okay, round two. Looking for yellow. Now I need green, then blue. But yeah, it's quite tactical. You want them to land exactly where you want them to land. But yeah, I have to admit, I'm not saying I'm a, f a fan of it, but I have to admit, it does spoil the game for me, because I'm sort of focusing on it for a completely utterly different reason now. Which is making it difficult because you're sort of losing track of what the enemies are doing. And for a level like this, okay, it's not so bad. But for Monster Island or Robot Islands, even the Iron of Doe, there's so many flying enemies. You're more likely going to be making mistakes or losing track of time. But now we need purple and violet, so then we're good to go. As long as you do it in that order, you can pick up more along the way. But if you've already got it, it shouldn't affect the end result. Uh, so that's fine, but yeah, we need to get them onto this right side. But you only get them when you have dropped a rainbow on their head. So anyway, we have to go like the clappers now, keep going. No one done, when you get to the end, a golden chest rise, pick up what you can do along the way. Okay, here we go, I am wanting a purple this time, and violet, in that order. There's the purple, blue, not a problem. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is correct or not, but once you've got them all in the right order, I think you have to try and reach the boss without dying. I think so. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I've only sort of done it a few times. I haven't had a lot of experience in it. I don't know a lot of the ins and outs about it. But yes, I mean, the item that you're given could be anything from the power of flight to the power of one single rainbow, Double rainbow or fast moving rainbows. Don't know. But anyway, we got it anyway. So what we're trying to do now is get to the end, defeat the boss without dying. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not sure. But now we're like this. The pressure is off you in a way. They can go a little bit more faster. Just keep going. But yeah, I don't know if I like it like this or not. I prefer just doing it the old way, the easy way, just going really quickly. Not necessarily going for points. Just going for survival. Okay, on we go to the final phase. All we're trying to do now is reach the boss. Don't be killed by the boss. Don't be killed prior to the boss. But with this, we should be fine. But yes, this is only going to be the third time I've done it. Back in the day, we didn't know you could do this. We just assumed that the diamond placements were always going to be random. But back in the day, we used to pick up so many diamonds. And sometimes, we didn't actually get any full set of diamonds. We just thought it was just completely and utterly random. We didn't actually realise there was this much to it. It's all about the placement of where they land. And it only happens when they are crushed, not when you hit them normally. But anyway, boss battle, and there should be a door here. And there's the door. The trouble is, there's the spider. I think the spider first. There we go. And once you've killed the spider, pick up what you can do, and then go to the exit door. But do it in quick time. So you should be getting massive diamonds. Alright, pick that up. Be quick about it, it's, of course, this is timed. Right, what do we get? It's like Christmas Day morning, do we get the bike, the skateboard, or the games console? Right, we've got a shoe! Quite disappointed with that one, there we go. But there we go, I'm assuming now, we keep the shoe, whether we die or not. So yeah, unfortunately, no double rainbows, no speedy rainbows, no power flight. But there we go, like I say, didn't know it back in the day, but I do now. I've already messed it up, but that is the second level, it's a fantasy game, Rainbow Island. There we go, next one on the list, fantastic game, this is Night Shift. Played it loads back in the day, but it's one of these games which I've never really fully understood how the game actually worked. It is good though. Okay, so the game is Night Shift, a video game developed by Attention to Detail and published in 1990 by video film games. It's an action game where the hero is a worker in a factory owned by Industrial Might and Logic, a parody of Industrial Light and Magic. Right, Shift on Duty has got to make five stormtroopers. It's a fantasy game, played loads back in the day, but I didn't really understand it back then. Struggling now too. Okay, here we go. The player's captain sure the factory is working correctly. He out Star Wars action figures, those of Stormtroopers and Darth Vader. 
This is the game to always ensure the factory is working correctly as you move into increasingly better homes. This massive contraption is called the Beast. First thing you've got to do is put power to it by using this bicycle. The more you pedal, the more those light bulbs and the flashlights go tomorrow. If you're doing that, you should be good to go. Now, outside the office door are four lights. Now, if you see any green lights, of course, it's a good thing. But being a factory, of course, could be problems. So there's one area we've got to try and fix, and your captain is called Fred Fixit. But yes, played as loads back in the day, and I actually got myself a much more detailed manual. And yes, it's taken a bit of time, but I think now I've got it. But the most crucial part is what we were getting wrong back in the day. It's based around the temperature. But yeah, you've got to get the right temperature. But anyway, this machine has one fault, so you've got to use a spanner. So you set the spanner and fix it real good. Then we head over to the Bunsen burner. This is where I was going wrong all this time. I've always got to plug it in, I knew that. But it's trying to keep the right constant temperature. So what you'll do first is basically put it to the highest setting. And this is incredibly easy to miss, which is why I never spotted it back in the day. But if you look at the top of the screen now, you can see there's actually steam happening up there. Which is what you need to see, but back in the day we never spotted that. So once you set the maximum temperature, it will stop the steam. You turn it back down to the most minimum temperature. Wait for the steam to depart. Which it has. Then you go up two more temperatures. And that should keep it at the right constant temperature. But yes, back in the day, we didn't know that. If it was too hot, we turned it down. If it was too cold, we turned it back up. We couldn't get it at the right constant temperature. It was changing all the time. And if it's not putting out any mould, it's putting out bubbles, basically. But now, we've got to try and get back to the bottom of the screen. Now, your energy at your time is that candle. There's two ways you can do it. Either just climb down there, hope for the best, don't take too much damage. Or pick up items on the way. Now, you use the umbrella to get to lower grounds, and you use the glue to get to higher grounds, but only if you have them. So when you're moving around, make sure you're picking them up whenever you can. And also, make sure that you are also giving the machine enough power. So, of course, get back on your push bike and make those lights change. As you can see now, we've got four green lights. Always good, always well. But finding the temperature is the right temperature, there shouldn't be have any problems. Any rejects goes to the reject bin and be deducted from your wages. But there we go, that is fantastic. Also, there's some time pickups, which is very rare, but that helps as well. Every time you fall down, which is easy done in this game, that changes your handle. The game was first conceived as Fix It, Volving around a factory worker trying to keep the machine nicknamed the Beast from breaking down, while simultaneously needed to be charged by a buzzable based generator every few minutes. This Barbara Gibbs was a childhood love of engineering who built upon the idea just that they have a plan run through part of the machine as an animated platform game, renaming the project Mr. Fix It. Dean met with LucasArts producers who were receptive to the idea and wanted to make use of their existing intellectual properties as well. Dean redesigned the game's concept to tie in with them more readily and added a female playable character to add feminine appeal to the title. The game was then rebranded Night Shift as a suggestion of Lucas Art, and Dean developed the manual based around the idea of an employee Amber inspired by manuals used in Infocom games. So there we go, once you've got the right temperature, then you're good to go. Of course, you get some rejects along the way, you go in there, you get a big fat cross, and you get a little bit of a deduction. As long as you meet your quota, you don't get sacked, you then go in on the next day, and you've still got a job. But yes, make sure you keep these light bulbs going. But I just can't believe, I mean, yes, some phones are so small, very easy to miss, and like, back in the day, we did miss it. Yeah, it's just crazy, really. Something so small, and has so much big impact on something of this size. But we've absolutely nailed it. We finished it absolutely ages ago. Any more you get, it's going to help towards your wages. It's $344 now. But the more you earn, the further you best in this game, the more houses you're going to get. Because it's going to be a lot bigger in size. You start off with a basement, pretty much. You go to a massive mansion. Don't know. Never actually seen it, though. But I read the manual. So there we go. Absolutely superb. So we get $100 for every one we do successfully. The more you do, the more money you earn. The more you earn, the quicker you go and get a bigger house. But yes, back in the day, it would have been difficult. It was difficult. Just keep changing it all the time. But when you get the right temperature and it stays there, you've got no issues or worries. But of course, the progress of the game is going to get a lot more difficult. But of course, we're going to get some deductions. Ten dollars is deducted. Wrong colour, parts in the wrong place. It's all down to a reject. We've done 27 successfully. And you do it successfully, the manager is happy, and you keep your job. And then you get your next quota. There you go, number two, there's your password. But fantasy game, that is night shift.
we go. Next on the list, fantastic game. A game that doesn't really get mentioned, but it's fantastic. Played loads back in the day. Digging it far back in the day because, again, something I didn't know. But this is Metal Mutant. Came out in 1991. Okay, so the game is Metal Mutant, a side scrolling action adventure game, developed and published for MS DOS and Mega Time ST. Released in 901. The game allows the player to transform any time into three different robot forms Cyborg, Dino, and Tank. The player controls Metal Mutant, the ultimate battle machine, which is sent to a heavily protected high tech planet Chronox to fight and destroy the tyrant, Iro 7. On the way to this goal, the player needs to solve puzzles and combat hostile life forms and enemy robots. Now I played this loads back in the day, but this first level is absolutely brutal. Very long level as well, but yes, never ever got past this first level. However, in the option screen, you do have a trainer. But yes, I did get past it on the trainer, which does make it a tad more easier. But as a result of that, when you finish the level, you go back to the menu screen. So it's basically just a practice. But in the real deal, you never ever got past this level. Now you do have a draining energy bar. And you can be taking damage all the time. You've got to be in the right form. You press down and fire to switch forms. And at the start of the game, each of your characters does have limited weapons, which can be picked up along the way. But yes, you might be taking quite a lot of damage when you're trying to switch to the correct one. So there's a lot of learning in this game. Big, big learning curve. But yes, once you've got all the skills, then you're firing all cylinders. However, I've never actually seen all of them. Now, the tank starts off with a 360 laser gun. The dino starts off with the bite, the flame, and the flame tail. And the cyborg starts off with a jump, the trident, and a recharge, which I didn't know back in the day you had the recharge. I didn't know where you do it and how to use it, but that is certainly a game changer. So again, like many, many of games on this list, I've been doing it so long after all this time. I get to it in a moment, but yes, I am having my energy drain quite a lot. Score, 3,500. So anyway, this is what I used to do back in the day. I kept seeing this contraption in the air. Now, this thing doesn't actually attack you, it's just there. And I kept thinking, what is its purpose? Why does it not attack you? So all I used to do is I'd walk past it, or shoot it out of the sky, and just carry on. Well, that's what I did back in the day. So of course, in the early points of the game, you start off with limited abilities, but later on, the cyborg picks up the axe, the grappling hook, and the energy blast. Dino picks up the shield, the remote mechanical flight, and the barnic eye. And the tank later on picks up the heavy torpedo and the boss energy signal detector. So a lot to do, a lot to see and do, but yes, you've got to get past this first level for people to see most of those. Which is why it's still a lot to this game I haven't seen. But anyway, some enemies got attacked like that, some got to use bullets, and some got to use flame. So yes, a lot to see and do, but yeah, here, you can actually be into the kill territory if you fall into the swamp. You've got to jump at the right time. Well, we made it, but only just. Look at that energy. That is so incredibly low. I can't believe it. But anyway, we're going to do this correctly. It took me to the year 2021 to finally figure this out. And you've got to be the cyborg. You stand underneath it, and you hold the fire button down, and press diagonal back down. And there we go. It regenerates your energy. Not only does it do that, it actually saves your progress. But how on earth do not know that? But of course, that makes it so much easier. And of course, since this, since I've figured it out, I have got past this level multiple times. But yes, I complete another game changer once again. It flies away, and we continue on. There's not actually that much to do now, but now energy's restored. So it should be doable, because there are still some instant kills along the way. But all this time, I was shooting that thing out of the sky. That's not the way to do it. You're supposed to use it. Yeah. Crazy. But yes, the tank has the final say. So, we do this by now using our new skill, which is diagonal down forwards. And there we go! So much energy! It makes it so much easier. However, the next level is also very difficult. For every time you're shooting, once again, now we're trying to figure that one out. I just cannot believe it's taking me a long time to figure that out. But there we go! Fans of the game, Metal Mutant. There we go! Next on the list, credit game, starring James Pond and the Acrobats. Good luck, Pond. With a penny on you, Pond. Okay, so the game is a credit game, signed James Pond and the Acrobats, a 2 sports game, but it's by Victor Dean and published by Millennium Interactive, featuring James Pond, well known well known for his side scoring platform game series. Now, this is the 100 meter splash. Basically, you've got to try and qualify in 17 seconds, which is plenty, as long as you keep whacking the joystick. But anyway, what did I not know about this game back in the day? Well, I found out when I was doing a long play a long time ago, but yes, it's not a long game. Couldn't believe I didn't know it. Oh, 
Okay, so when you finish a certain event and you get a certain score, down the bottom of the screen it will say bonus event available. Now back in the day we never actually sponsored that, but what you're supposed to do is when that's on the screen you press the space bar. And that takes you to one of the bonus events. There's two in this game, one is juggling, and one is the long jump. No idea you could do that back in the day. You're probably thinking, do you actually read instruction manuals? Sometimes. Back in the day, not a lot, I have to admit. If I did, I would have learned a lot of these things. But there we go, this is the long jump. So, we're using Fortescue Fog. So, like hop, skip, and jump, but we're doing just one single jump this time. Qualify 350. Now this. There we go, 468. But there we go, no idea you could do that. And you get an excellent Shield of Merit awards. So, there we go, brilliant. So there we go, not too shabby, four goals, good start, and of course we have the badge, there we go, fantastic. Right, just finish shell shooting, now that was quite a good score, quite a good time. So if it's good enough, you'll get the option to do another bonus event, which is there, press spacebar. Okay, same one again, but there we go, another chance at it, still the same score to qualify, there we go. Look at him go. So yes, I guess it's just random each time. And surprisingly though, there's not actually that many events. But yes, long jump and juggling are the only two there are. But there we go, excellent Shield of Merit awarded. There we go. Juggling, I've only done once. I didn't quite understand how it works. So there we go, not too bad, not too shabby. But just one that let me down. Never mind, still a good game though. And again, something I didn't know back in the day, but that is a credit games. There we go, the final one of today's list is a classic once again, this is Apidia. I have finished it many, many, many times, but there was something, once again, I didn't know about. I can't believe it. Okay, so the game is Apidia. Hold and Sword should have been in the game. Directed by German studio Kaiko, and released by Playbike for the Vega in 1992. It was Kaiko's second game developed. It's quite been level 2 in its title, it's got a sequel in the game. The game is a hold and scrolling shooter with similar elements of classic shooter -like games. The story revolves around Ikura, whose wife Yuri has been poisoned by Hexai, an evil lord of black magic. Ikura uses magic to transform himself with Deadly Bee and wants to find the antidote to cure Yuri and to have revenge on Hexai. And that game was very difficult to read while doing it. This game is absolutely superb. I cannot fault this game. Of course, this game is very well known for having bonus stages. This is the field which has two bonus stages. The pond has one bonus stage. The pipe has one bonus stage. But the one I'm referring to is the one that features on the mechanical machine, which of course is the speed of light, which I've never been able to find. I've looked absolutely everywhere. And so I thought. I knew it existed. You actually in the option screen, you can the soundtrack, and it's there. I just didn't know where it was. But it's fantastic, but yes, once again, it's taking age to find it. No M for map this time. Okay, so for the first one features in the first level, this is called The Field, which takes place after defeating the Caterpillar, which releases an angel into the air. You don't have to pick it up, but if you do, it'll take you to the bonus stage. If you don't, it'll fly away. This is heaven or hell. Basically, you can't fire here. It's basically a way of collecting additional points. This game is very generous for points. And of course, you can earn additional life through points. But yes, collect the angels, avoid the demons. Every time you hit one of the devils, then it ends. But you don't lose a life. This is a really, really nice touch of earning additional points very early on in the game. And of course, yes, this does get faster. Okay, so of course, the next one features on Era 1 2. The same page after defeating the mole. This one's called Underground. The same as in the tin. Defeat the mole, go into the mole hill. But yeah, pretty much all of these I figured out quite early on in my life, back in the day. So of course you can't fire here, it's more of a, an avoid them up or in, also a bit of a collect them up. Very easily, pick up what if you can, don't touch the tops and bottoms of the screen or the sides of the screen. Pick up what if you can and avoid anything that attacks you, but you can't lose lives here. But this one I've never actually completed before, pretty much the same bit gets me every single time. But it's this bit here. Very difficult, I have to admit. Ah, that very did, but there we go, it's fantastic. So of course you move on, no lives are lost. Okay, the next one takes place of course in the pond, and it's called the Pike's Summer. The really bright bulb in the Christmas tree, it goes to the Pike's mouth. This one happened pretty quite a few times. There we go. The weakness is the eyeball. Go in. 
So there we go, this one is called the Pike Summer. And it's actually for Silver Tin once again. And we are actually picking up Coke cans. All additional points. Avoid the enemies and avoid the teeth. Yeah, this is probably the easiest of all of them. I've picked this one probably the most times. But there's still some, which I'm still trying to figure out the best way, the best approach to it. But still, a nice way to earn additional score. Score equals additional points, additional likes, is what I meant to say. Yeah, pick up the coke cans with the teeth. There you go, in one end, out the other. And resume play. Shoot the eyeball. Okay, we arrive at the next one. This takes place after you defeat the dead rat. So yeah, destroy it, his stomach opens up, and yes, back in the day I thought, why not? Let's go inside and see what happens. And yes, you can actually go inside the stomach, and that takes you towards the next bonus stage. Yeah, here we go. Right, again, it's an avoider map. So yeah, this one I finished many, many times as well. But also, if you actually defeat the level, you do actually earn additional lives. So I think this one you earn about two or three lives to reach the end. Okay, we arrived at the area I'm referring to, but first we'll do a little bit of a change. Transformation sequence initiated. Gene splicing activated. Metaphorsis completed. But there we go, it takes place on this level. But yes, I looked absolutely everywhere. But again, so I thought, but not looking far enough. But of course, what threw me off was all these bonus stages. You're either going into something or going through something. But I just couldn't figure out where it was. It's all early this year, I can't believe it, it's the age of 40, I found it. Okay, so this is actually the point of entry, which I've never thought back in the day, because enemies are coming out of there. So of course, I'm trying to defeat the enemies, but I had no intention of going in there. But this is the entrance to the speed of light, and it's pretty much like Project X, also a little bit like Tarragon 2, that sort of thing. Once again, it's survival, no fire in here, no enemies here this time. All you're trying to do is get as far as you can. Every time you're moving, you're earning additional score. Great way of earning additional score. But of course, it starts off fairly slow ish, but does get fast quite quickly. And it might seem like some of it is quite easy, but all of a sudden it throws something at you quite quickly, multiple times, and you've got to try and adapt to the situation. But I think it's probably best to try and stay in the middle of the screen if you can. But yes, it's only so long to find it, now I've got to try and figure this one out. But yeah, I do, I, I do like these sort of levels, I always have done. Why is it Project X? I think my favourite. Ugh, but there we go! Speed of light! Okay, we're here again, let's give it another try. Okay, we're here again. Give it another go. But yes, what was making this quite difficult to find after all this time is all the other ones feature either at the boss or immediately after the boss. This one is the only one that takes place in mid-stage. But yes, there was, wasn't anything really any sort of saying, go here. There wasn't really anything. But yes, the point of entry was where enemies are coming out of, so I wouldn't have thought twice to go in there. Because in the very you find space and the screen is scrolling, you don't get a lot of time to go in there. So that's why I've never really thought about it. But yeah. Well anyway, let's see how we do this time. I don't seem to be quite as fast this time. Now, if you're wondering how I'm doing this, yes, I'm actually killing myself immediately after failing the bonus stage. And because it puts you to a checkpoint, which is just before the point of entry, you can go back in and have another go. But of course, yes, it's costing lives, and of course, my weapons are dropping like flies. But yeah, it's the only bonus stage where you can actually retry due to the checkpoint. But yes, of course, I would be a pea shooter for me now, I expect. Last chance, last life. Yeah, I think the same bit keeps getting me every time. I can't remember where it is. Let me go as the worst I've ever done. So I didn't do it, but of course, keep going back and trying again. It was costing lies. But there we go, hopefully you enjoyed it. That is 10 things I didn't know back in the day on the Amiga, which I do now. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Jamie Bulls Games. Please like me, comment, share, please subscribe to my channel, face the fan page, please go on Twitch, just type in Mortal Games, you find it fairly easily. Please remember to click the bell icon, now notify visit Lobo, fantastic. We'll do these videos, do virtual days and cheats, happy making, and live streams on Friday night because I'm going to work and sometimes do manuals and find things out I didn't know back in the day. It's the highlight of my week. This is Hunter Easy. Ciao, bye, see ya.
Okay, let's start off with a classic. But like I say, there's no ticket orders this list. There's 10 things you didn't know back in the day. We'll start off with Mega 2. Me Mega 2? Mega 2? What's Mega 2, Jamie? Mega 2. Now while I'm doing this video, I actually bought myself a temporary chair until my new one arrives. This is the most uncomfortable chair I've ever sat on. It is unbelievable. I have to admit, I've had a few problems with this one. I'm trying to capture it, but on the 1200 it runs too quickly. So I've plugged in my 500, but now we've got some glitchy side screens. Right, it's actually my fourth attempt trying to get Metal Mutant working. I tried capturing it on the 1200, it was running far too quickly. My disc version doesn't work. Uh, try capturing on the 1200, it's running too fast. And now we've got issues with dodgy... Oh. Right, so here we are, towards the end of the level, and of course, yes, charging up your energy is going to make the last few screens a bit more easier for you. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Well, we made it, however, only just. Look at that energy. That is so incredibly low. But anyway, we're going to do this correctly. It took me to the year 2021 to figure this out. And you've got to stand underneath it, and you've got to be the cyborg. So you hold the fire button down, and you hold diagonal up left. Oh, poo! No, it's wrong. No, diagonal back down. Okay, so the game is a credit game signed James Pond and Acrobats, a 1992 sports video game developed by Figure Dean and published by Millennium Interactive. It was features James Pond, better known as his... Oh. This is a 100 meter splash, basically you've got to try and qualify in 17 minutes. 17 minutes, yeah let's do this for 17 minutes Jamie, 17 seconds you pillock. 